Hello and welcome to the Bishop Wood Nativity. I'm really pleased that at the end of what has been a very challenging year for everyone, we've been able to bring our school community together to put on this nativity for, for all of you. Of course, these things don't happen by accident. It takes a considerable amount of effort. And I'd like to thank, in particular, Mrs. Reeve for organising it and also uh, the parent power of uh, Bill, Anton, Anthony and Vince who came down and helped film over several days. I hope you enjoy the nativity and best wishes for a restful Christmas to you all. Hang the baubles on the tree carefully please. Yes, they are the same baubles that I hung on my tree when I was a child. They're boring. Where are the chocolate ones? Don't shake your presents. I want to know where it is. There better be a PlayStation 5. My stocking is the biggest. I'm going to get more presents than you. Oh, fantastic. Let's listen to the lovely carols. got to do with anything. Let us tell you a story. A story of the first Christmas. Imagine all the stars in the sky, the amazing solar system, and among it, a little planet called Earth. God made all of those things, and all of the people and animals of our planet. Just over 2,000 years ago, when we most needed him, God came down to be with us, to save us, and to show us how I should be lived. He could have built his home anywhere, could have built a palace for himself, but he didn't. God chose to send his son down to be born among the forgotten, the overlooked and the poorest. This is the story of how God came to be with us. The story opens with a young woman in her home, Mary. Unless you look a bit deeper, there's nothing particularly remarkable about Mary. She was from a town called Nazareth and engaged to be married to Joseph, but to God she was very important. So important that God sent an angel down from heaven with the message for her. Hello to you, you are very special, God is with you. But Mary found it hard to understand why the angel had come to see her. She was just an ordinary woman. She worried what the angel meant by the greetings. Seeing she was scared, the angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary, God is very pleased with you. You will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. He will be known as the God, Son of the Most High. I don't understand. I'm not yet married. How can I have a son? The Holy Spirit will come and his power will give you a baby. People will call him the Son of God. I'm a servant of God. I believe it will happen as he said. Mary, did you know that your baby? 
about the news of the baby. She told Joseph the man she was about to marry all about it. But a few months later, Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, who ruled over the land, sent out orders saying he wanted to count up every single person in the country. So everyone, including Mary and Joseph, had to return to their hometowns to be registered. Joseph came from a faraway town called Bethlehem. Because Mary was engaged to be his wife, she would have to go with him to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph hastily packed up all their possessions ready for the journey ahead. They prepared their donkey to help them on their way. During the journey, Mary was very nearly to give birth to her baby. Although tired and weary, Mary and Joseph traveled for many miles. They went from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea and then to Bethlehem. Thank you. 
Bethy and they knocked on every door in the town looking for a place to stay. But everywhere was full of people. Each time they were given the same answer, lots of people have come to be counted, so the whole town was full. There were many families to accommodate. Mary and Joseph nearly gave up, but then they tried the last guest house. I'm so sorry. All my rooms are full of guests from across the country. All I can offer is my stables at the back where we keep all the animals. Thank you so much. We'll take it. Thank you. At least we have somewhere. went to stay in the stable. They were a bit what I wanted to be like inside. It was cold and smelly with only hay for comfort. It was a very difficult place to bring new life into the world. But Mary and Joseph had no choice so they had to be brave and make the best of it. Late into the night the miracle happened and Mary had the baby. They named him Jesus and wrapped him up in swaddling blankets. They didn't have a bed to put him in, so they placed the Son of God into a manger. Usually the manger was used to feed animals, but today it had a more important job. When Mary was told she was going to give birth to the Son of the Most High, she wasn't expecting it to be in a manger surrounded by animals. However, as she looked, at the sleeping baby, she knew she was, he was a precious gift.
Meanwhile, in some fields nearby, a group of shepherds are keeping watch over flocks. It was night time and they were surprised, to say the least, to see an angel of the Lord appear in front of them. The glory of God shone all around the shepherds and they were terrified. These shepherds were just ordinary people going about their daily lives. They weren't considered very important. Nobody took much notice of them. So they were surprised when the angel spoke to them. Do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy. Good news to people across the world. Today in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born. You'll find a baby lying in a manger. Well, if this wasn't enough for the humble shepherds to take in, the angel was soon joined by a huge group of angels called the Heavenly Host. They said, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth. So they hurried off to seek Mary and Joseph and the baby, which they knew they would find lying in the manger. They found where the young couple were and the shepherds went in to see the, the baby in the manger. When they had seen his the shepherds told everyone they met about the child who had just been born.
people were amazed to hear the story. The son of the Most High, born in a stable. Nobody could have imagined this happening. Someone who would be called the Son of God placed in a dirty manger with only poor shepherds to greet him. The angel said it was good news for people across the world. There was something about this birth that made people feel hopeful. That someone so important could be born in such a humble condition gave hope to everybody, particularly the most poor and most needy on earth. The birth of Jesus was a sign that everyone would be accepted and everyone could come to Jesus for help. Whether rich or poor, important or forgotten, Jesus was for everyone. Sometime later, more people came to visit, but they didn't come straight to the stable. These three important people, sometimes called kings, sometimes wise men, or magi. That's another word we use when we say magic. And these are very smart people who knew all the secrets of the stars. But they had made a mistake. They knew from examining the heavens that an important, important event was taking place. A bright star rose in the sky and they followed it to worship the person whose birth it foretold. They knew that the star heralded the king of Jews. And where would the king be born? Yes, they went straight to a palace but they did not find him there. Then they saw the bright star in the sky again so they followed it until it stopped. Because you, because you are the king of kings, I bring you gold. Because you are the son of God, I bring you frankincense. Because you are the saviour of the world, I bring you myrrh. The wise men saw the child and worshipped him. They each bought a special gift to give to the baby Jesus. We travel. 
Each of them gave Jesus a precious gift, and that's why we give gifts at Christmas, particularly to poor and needy people. They went home even wiser men, realising that some precious things aren't always found in the richest places and are worth far more than money. They realised they should have offered their work to Jesus, the Son of God, born into poverty, who is a friend of poor and needy people. I didn't realise that's why we give presents. So it's about giving rather than receiving. Think about those who have very little. Who can we help this Christmas? Someone who doesn't get any presents. Someone who doesn't have a cosy Christmas home. Someone who doesn't have a tasty Christmas dinner. Who will you help this Christmas?